Folks, today I'm going to talk about something I do a whole lot of in the freelance world, which is multi-channel or multi-track, multi-camera, I guess, video. And I do this a whole lot for concerts. I work with Zoso. I do weddings. Um, you know, a lot of different things where you have more than one video stream and you're switching back and forth between them. It can be kind of tough to do, especially if you don't have the computer resources, a very super powerful computer to be monitoring all four or five or sometimes six or eight different streams of video. So today I'm going to do a quick little tutorial to show you how to maybe get the most out of your computer, even if it's not a very high powered computer, when you're doing multi-channel or multi-camera, multi-angle uh, video. So I'm going to jump right into it. What I've got here, I've got three different cameras, and you can see here I've got cam, a, a Cam 1 sequence, once a sequence, a Cam 2 sequence, and a Cam 3 sequence. And I shot this video when I was in Asheville. I used three GoPro Hero 3s mounted to the top of my car. One forward-facing, uh, one left-facing. I think this is maybe the, that's the right-facing one, I guess. And, uh, and then I've, one that was left-facing. So what I've got, I've got three different streams of video. And they're very big. These are 60 frames per second, 1080p video. So it, it's like 40 megs per second, each one of these video streams. Now, imagine if you wanted to have all three of those video streams playing at once. That's going to be like 120 megs per second trying to come off your hard drives, trying to be processed by your computer. And, and that's hard for any computer. Uh, and I, I'm using a Core i5 uh, at home when I do most of my editing. So it's very tough on the computer. What I'm going to show you is my sort of way of, of, of working with these big bitrate videos and still making it very easy and pleasant to do the switching back and forth. So what I did, I used three angles, a front, uh, left, and right. And what I do, initially I bring all the video in. Here are the, the MP4s that came straight off of my GoPro. I imported them in. To, I made a folder called Cam1 and Cam1 and a, a sequence called Cam1. I made a folder called Cam2 and a sequence called Cam2, a folder called Cam3, a sequence called Cam3. Now, what I did, I just pulled those in sequence, in, you know, so that they're one right after the other into a timeline. So here, for instance, is camera one, and here are the three pieces of video. Now, uh, you, you might say, well, you know, my computer can, can play 60 frames a second. Well, I'm using a very high-power computer here, and watch what happens. I'm going to make this so you can see it a little bit better. It doesn't take long for this video to start getting stuttery. Watch this. Playing okay for right now. Playing okay, playing okay. Now look at this. We're getting pretty herky-jerky. Look at this. It's hitting maybe one frame a second now. You cannot edit video properly when it's doing that. So what I do, I create a proxy file. So what I've got, got Cam1, and I go here and I export this as about a, and rather than a 40 megasecond video, I export as a 2 megasecond video. So what I've got is I've got a 59.94 or roughly 60 uh frame per second piece of video. I want to leave it at that, but I, I don't want it to be this super high bit rate video for my proxy. So I'm going to say, I might click on this window and make sure that it's got the yellow around it, right? I'll say file, export, media. Okay, then I'm going to go here to the media. Now what you can do, you can set, it, set this up in a queue and let this go overnight if you want to. That's typically what I will do. Uh, I will set my proxies up to render out overnight. But I typically pick H.264 from the drop down menu here. So I'm going to pick, now I've already set up some presets here that I use, but I'm going to go ahead and pick a preset down here, like this HD 1080p 2997. That's not what I'm going to be using naturally, but I'm going to use this as a, as a starting point. Uh, now, that's, so right now I've got this HD, but I'm going to go ahead and change this. I know that I'm 59.97. I know that by, by I clicked on my camera one up here, and it shows me what I am, 59.94 rather, P. So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go down to video. See the video tab here? you got video and audio. I'm going to click on the video. I'm going to go down to 59.94. All right. And I'm going to go down to the bottom, and it's going to say something like 32 to 40. I want to make this two. Two megs and two megs. And the audio doesn't matter so much. Typically, it's going to come up to, I think, 192 uh, bit rate right there. You can leave it at that if you want to. That's, your computer's not going to probably have a problem with, with uh, streaming that at all when you're doing your edits. So what I'm going to do, I would typically set this up to Q, or I would export it if I want to. But see, I'm talking about a 679 meg file for this entire big long 48 minute piece of video, or 44 minute piece of video that I've got down here on the bottom. 
I'm going to export that either through the queue or just export it. Queuing for me is easier because I can let it ha happen overnight while I'm sleeping. And I'm going to do that for all three pieces of video. I'm going to cancel this for now, but that's what I've done. I've created uh, three different proxy files. So if you look here, I've already imported them. I've got a cam1 proxy.mp4. It's two megasecond. I've got a cam2 proxy mp4, two megasecond, and a cam3 proxy, two megs per second. Okay, so now I've gone back to camera one, and I'm going to get the cam1 proxy. I'm going to double click on it, and it's going to show up here. And so I've got just the proxy. All I need is the video. I don't need the uh, audio from this. So I'm just going to grab the little video thing right here, not the one that says audio, but the little video one here. I'm going to drag it down onto my cam1. Now, I'm not going to lay it on the video. I'm going to put it on video 2. So it's on video 2. Now, does it match up? Let's go to the end and look. Since we picked the right frame rate, look, this comes out perfect. I've got a 2 megasecond piece of video over the top of a 40 megasecond piece of video. Now, if we scrub, it's naturally not going to look as good. It's not going to be as sharp. But now watch if we play through some of this. Let's watch and see how this video looks. Uh, we, could hit the, we could hit the tilde key here. I could click on this, hit the tilde key and it blows it up full screen, and we can hit play. And now, even though this piece of video is a little bit blocky, it never gets stuttery. See, I can see all that very well, and it's, in, it, it's, it's pretty good. It's definitely good enough to be editing, right? No stuttering, no sputtering at all. I'll hit the tilde key again to get out of that, and we'll hit stop. So, we're gonna do the same thing for the other two sequences. Here's the cam two sequence. Let's get the cam2 proxy. And over here it is. Okay, I'm going to pull this back over so we've got kind of equal distance here. And I'll pull just the video, not the audio, on top of that. Do the same thing with cam3. Cam3 proxy. Pull just the video, not the audio. Now what I did when I did shot all three of these videos, uh, I, I shot them with the GoPro's mount on top. And I did go ahead and put in a, uh, I'm going back to cam1. I put a hand clap at the beginning just so I could synchronize all three cameras. So I'm going to click down on the little audio triangle here on the audio, see? I'm going to, I'm going to use this little button here to zoom in on what I'm looking at. And I want to see, I'm going to zoom in even closer. And I want to see where my hand clap is here. Let's go ahead and play this piece of video and listen. Here I am walking around. I can see the hand clap right there. One, two, three. So there's my hand clap. I'm going to zoom way in on it. And I'm going to go to where I first hear that hand clap. Right there it is. I'm going to cut this, both of these pieces of video. Cut and cut. Now I could put markers here and do some weird things. To me, I'm not going to use this video in front of this anyway. So why not just go ahead and just delete it. Now I'm going to click on the blank area here, the gray area, and right click and do ripple delete. Now that just pulled everything forward and I have a piece of video on cam 1 that starts with my hand clap. Let's do the same thing on cam 2. So, I'm going to, again, twirl the audio down so I can see the spike. I'm not even going to play it this time. I know where the spike is. I can see my, my hand. I think I can right there. One, two, three. Okay. So, let's zoom back in. There is the hand clap. So, I'm going to hit do the C. The C changes the cursor into a little uh, razor tool. So, I just did that. Hit C. Now, I'm going to hit V. And that turns it back into a pointer. I'm going to highlight this. Delete right click and do ripple delete and once again now i've got a piece of video that starts with the hand clap so i've got camera one and camera two doing that here's camera three let's twirl down the audio again let's zoom in see if we can find the hand clap i can see right here i'm gonna fast forward a little bit okay so right there it is let's zoom in there it is i'm gonna hit the c I'm going to cut post both pieces of video, hit the V again so I can hot, so I can uh, drag across them, delete, right click, ripple, delete. Now I've got three pieces of video in sequences, in separate sequences. I've got a cam one, cam two, cam three sequence. Now I've got a, a sequence over here called tracks. So this tracks, I'm going to pull cam one, the cam one sequence, right? Not the cam one proxy, not the, any cam one video, but the cam one sequence in there. I'm going to put it right there. Okay. So I've got cam one on video one and audio one. I'm gonna pull cam two sequence right here, the little sequence, and pull it down on top of that. So it's on video two and audio two. Then I'm gonna pull cam three sequence down and put it over the top of those. Now, right now, I've got three pieces of video, if we go look again, that have the 
two megasecond uh, in there, and I've nested those sequences inside this one called tracks. Now, I am going to make another one, another sequence. I'm going to right click in here and say new sequence. I'm going to call this one <coughs> mix, M I X. Okay. Now, on mix, I'm going to pull tracks where all the nested sequences are. Here are all the nested sequences inside there. So now I'm going to go back to mix. I'm going to pull the tracks into there. Awesome. Change sequence settings? Yes, change sequence settings. We want to know that it's playing the right frame rate. And if I click on mix here, I can look and see that it is a 59.94 uh, piece of video. So now what I do, I right click onto the tracks, right? And I say multi camera enable. See, right? I right, right clicked again, multi camera enable. Now this has been multi camera enabled. Now I can go to window and I can do a uh, multi camera monitor. And now I've got the three uh, pieces of video synchronized. Now one thing I've not done, I have an audio, I'm gonna, I'm gonna close this for a minute, I'm gonna close this. I have an audio commentary that my wife and I did inside the car. So we're riding around Asheville, North Carolina. This is gonna be some little Asheville, North Carolina video. And I, I it recorded on a little voice recorder inside the car, the car audio MP3. So let's, let's double click on that. I'm going to zoom in again. I'll get very close to the beginning and see where my hand clap is on this. <laughs> I'm kind of loud there. Here we go. See if it's right here. One, two, three. Okay, so there is going to be my hand clap on that. Let's zoom in and drag over to that. All right, I'm, going to, I'm going to hit the in right here, the mark in. Then I'm going to pull that audio. Now I've got this audio. This is in the mix. I'm going to pull this audio down here onto audio two. So now I've got audio from inside the car that is synced up to this. And I don't want to, um, you can see here we stopped recording inside the car because my wife got kind of aggravated with me at some point. So we just stopped recording inside the car. This is all wasted your video. I'm not going to use over here. So I'm going to pull this on in. So. I'm going to go here and I'm going to turn the audio off on this, or I could even delete it. It really doesn't matter, but I'm going to turn it off for now. So now what I'm going to hear, and I'm going to be hearing my audio inside the car, I'm going to have three streams of video right here. So I'm going to go up to, once again to Winda, multi-camera, and there we go. Now we should be hearing my commentary with me and my wife. I'm going to start on camera one, which is the center, and we're going to ride around Asheville a little bit, and I'm going to show you how, you, how easily you can edit this. I'm going to hit the play button. Okay, we good. That is my See pug. That. that is my pug barking. You are right. She is as foul. She's foul today. What is wrong with that? Now we're starting to move. Happy dog. <laughs> See if all these folks are getting ready to start getting out. Now I'm clicking on these various different pieces of video here. Baptist church in front of us, and I'm not sure what this one is. We're just learning a little bit. It's First Congregational Church, and they're getting out. They're out. So they're just coming out of church over here at the That's first conversation. Yeah, this is April 14th, 2013. We're just doing our little video blog. We're a little ride around kind of thing. There should go right here. Probably so. Just to be safe. First Congregational United Church of Christ office. Never heard of the First Congregational Church. And first Baptist again on the ride over here. We came and did an Asheville ride around. It's been probably a month and a half ago, wasn't it? And it's before I had three GoPros. We had one GoPro on the front. Okay, I'm going to stop that for a minute. So I've come out of the uh, multi-camera window. I'm looking at my edits I just made. And so let's say that, uh, you know, that I want to change the color or something on one of these. Let's say that, for instance, this piece of right here, I want like this to be brighter. I'm going to go here and do brightness contrast. The reason I'm showing you this, I'll show you B-R-I-G, brightness contrast. You don't have to go and edit the original piece of video. You're editing the, the nested uh, sequence. So what's kind of cool here is anything I do, then right now I'm working with that proxy, right? But if I go in here and change the brightness and contrast, I'm going to click on effects control. I'm going to change the, I'm going to twirl over the little brightness and the contrast. I'm going to bring the brightness up some, bring the contrast up some. Brightness and contrast. I'll turn it off to see what I got. There's my before, there's my after. Much nicer piece of video. But if we go full screen with this, you'll see it's very blocky. I'll go tilt, 
You see how there's a lot of little transient mess in here. It's not a sharp looking piece of VOL. That's because we're looking at the proxy, right? But here's what the beauty of doing it this way is. Let me hit the tilt again to get out. Let's go back. I, I'm, I'm on the MC1 here. That's that's my forward camera. So I'm going to go to multi-camera one, cam one, and I'm going to turn the proxy off. Now, if we go back to mix and we go to that piece of video and I do the tilt and click on here again, hit the tilt. Now look at that. Super sharp and my brightness contrast is there. Now see what's so awesome about this. I'm going to click the tilt again and get back out of this. Come on, baby. Uh, I'm going to go back and turn the proxy back on. I can do all my editing in the proxy. Color correction, all my cuts. I can do uh, uh, color saturation, three-way color switching, fast color correction. Uh, anything I want to do, I can do all my cross dissolves and everything, and I can do all that right in here without taking up a bunch of CPU. And then all I have to do is before I render out the final piece of video, as I go to each one of these and I turn the eyeball off to turn the uh, the uh, proxy video off. So I can go to cam two, I could turn the proxy video off. I go to cam three turn the proxy video off by clicking the eyeball. Now what I've got in my mix, if I scrub across it, is I've got awesome 60 uh, frame per second, 40 meg per second video that I'm going to be rendering from. And so therefore you end up with a really great result. So what I would highly recommend you do when you're doing this sort of video is, you know, what you're going to do in the end, you're going to, you're going to click on this and you're going to do an export at some high bit rate that's, that's, that's usable for YouTube or for a Blu-ray or whatever you're trying to render out to. But always use, uh, at least in my opinion, my humble opinion, it's really nice to do this, always use your proxies. Right now in this mix, when I'm doing this editing here, it's only three two megasecond streams of video. So that's six megs a second. Real easy for the hard drives to deliver that, real easy for the computer to process that. But when you turn those eyeballs off on the other sequences, cam one, cam two, camera three, and you're letting them use the uh, very high quality version and you do your render, then you can just walk away from it, let it do its thing, and uh, you know come back. Sometimes it might take for a 45 minute piece of video, it might take an hour, hour and a half, or, or two hours to render out, but it will render out all in high quality. And if you have any questions, just send those along here on the YouTube channel. Thanks. Bye-bye.